before I get into this, uh, I I think you can tell, I'm in a I'm in a different scene, <clears throat> and I came to Reno to hang out with my friend Tucker, and it's beautiful, fantastic, terrific, great, perfect, beautiful, fantastic, perfect, terrific, great. Okay, sounded more like me at the end, but anyway, I came to Reno. And I'm here, and so for for this week we're gonna have a bit of a different scenery. Um, I'm not in my home studio. I'm in a different studio, a more efficient studio. Anyway, so <laughs> that's just what I wanted to tell you first. Uh, but the next thing, so the New York Times wrote this horrible article, and essentially what they're saying is that oh well, you know it's great that the U.S. is out of war now. So basically, they're saying that Biden marked the uh, marked Independence Day for the first time in two decades, where the United States is not in active combat. And excuse, there's there's uh, barking dogs. So again, not my home studio. Ace would not bark like this. So not in uh, not in active combat. So that must mean we don't have troops anywhere, right? That's what they're talking about. That we don't have troops anywhere. So this is where I lose my damn mind because, and as I was telling my friend this morning, this, this is, this is stupidity at its best because what this shows here is the fact that they're ignoring the fact that we've got the, we've got shit going on in the military all the time. According to the white House's like laws guiding the framework for active war. Whatever the hell it's called. I'm not going to read the damn article. I'll lose my damn mind. So what What bothers me about this article is they're ignoring the fact that we're still in active combat in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Libya, Sudan, Niger, Yemen. Seven countries. We're bombing the hell out of seven countries. And, not only, and Biden pulls out of Afghanistan. But now Biden wants to go back into Afghanistan, not into, but he wants to do air raids so that he can blow up little children and blow up neighborhoods for no goddamn reason. Well, we need to fight the war on terror. The war on terror is over. You lost. They beat you. Oh, we need to control the Taliban. Taliban's in control of, of, of Afghanistan, you assholes. So he's trying to get access, get Pakistan to let him, let let him bomb Afghanistan from Pakistan. So get, give him access, because you know we gotta fill the industrial, the military industrial complex's pockets. You know that's how we do it in this country. And and he they're ignoring the fact that we're, you know, the Pentagon covered the fact that we're, you know, we, the U.S. just bombed. 70 civilians civilians I can't talk they just bombed 70 civilians so we're gonna ignore that fact we're gonna ignore that 70 people are now dead because the United States can't control its fucking drones oh we have precision precision striking and thank God for Daniel Hale who said no we don't we just randomly kill people Obama had a 90 percent civilian death rate oh these assholes man and then and then by the way, We've got 900, 1,000 military, what, 800 to 1,000 military bases around the world in Syria, in Libya, all these places, but also in Russia, in China, in Germany, Germany, France, where there are allies, by the way, in the Caribbean, the Indian, right? So we're surrounding Russia, by the way, and everywhere else. So you're going to tell me we're not in war? Come give me. We could fire a drone from wherever the hell we want with a missile. It's not like, oh, shit, I want to go hit Malaysia. Well, there's an Asian country right next to it, and uh, they have a base there. <laughs> or around that area. And then I could go in and talk about the shadow war in Africa. Or our CIA covert missions. Or our involvement in Iran and Venezuela, where all we're trying to do is get regime change and destabilize those... Um, those states and those countries so that we can force regime change. But li little do people know that we're doing actions from outside of those countries as well with sanctions. 
And by the way, sanctions are an act of war. When you prevent food and medicine and health goods and everything else from getting into the into those countries, those are an act of war. So they're they're trying to destabilize and and uh, these, uh, those countries and create a, a terrible state of mind in those countries. So they say, "Oh, those governments are failing." Yeah, because of us. And then, of course, you know we've we've got boots on the ground in a bunch of these countries. Oh, just to train, just to train these people how to fight. So our troops with guns, with tanks, with drums, with everything on the ground are training their fi- these countries' fighters. So if China and Iran were doing the same thing here in the United States and they were training other people how to fight in our homeland, that's an act of war. You know it. But the New York Times, a shitty-ass newspaper, puts it out there like, oh, it's fine. We're out of war. I like how my voiceover is talking. And I'm wrong. <laughs> So, you know, this paper, this New York Times article is so stupid. You know, I love how they censor me and Jimmy Dore and Jackson Hinkle and the Young Turks, those asswipes who love censorship. They censor us when we talk about these things or COVID-19, whatever we talk about. And I know whatever they they'll censor us. And they'll say, oh, we need to take you down because you're spreading misinformation. Well, the New York Times is spreading misinformation right now. Because right now they're saying, oh, well, we're not in war. When we're in seven fucking countries and we're doing shit in other countries where it's an act of war. Oh, man. this, This is just one reason. By the way, oh, and by the way, there's an opinion piece that says, in the New York Times, I think it's in the New York Times, where it's like, yeah, no, we're not actually out of war. Look at all the conflicts we're in. Look at this. Look at all the. So in the opinion piece, you kind of get a bit of truth. In the news piece, you get misinformation. Why aren't we censoring the New York Times? Why aren't we taking them down? Why aren't we getting? Why aren't we banning them from news cycles for um, misinformation? See, see the problem here. See, this is this is it. So. Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just very much bothered by this, and um, I don't know. It, I, this is why the mainstream media is not trusted by the American people. This is why online channels like this and similar to this are trusted more. This is why the media is losing the streaming wars right now, and they're having to bundle with people and CNN Plus and all these other dumbasses that are creating streams and MSNBC or MSDNC who have Nicole Wallace, the chief. Liar who got us into Iraq under Bush in their streaming. Like, they're they're doing all of that. That's why they're losing. This is why they're losing. And um, I hate to see it. 